welcome everyone to explore careers and explore careers in healthcare this month for uh, January's Healthcare Month. This episode, we talk a lot about the work that's being done in diversity, in equity, in the healthcare field. Um, and so I am so happy to be able to bring some of this information to you. Just as a reminder, uh, Governor Walz proclaimed January Healthcare Month. We acknowledge that there are a large number of healthcare openings throughout the state in all different types of clinics, long term care facilities, direct support care, um, and even Honestly, in the administration, the IT departments for some of the major corporations, um, there are so many job openings and the state Department of Health, the Department of Human Services, Minnesota Department of Education, uh, Department of Employment and Economic Development, Career Force, the governor's office and so on, all want to make sure that um, all of our job seekers know about this. So I always invite you to share this um, information. If you're watching later at a later date, share it with someone in your life who's considering a job change. And we're gonna hear stories about some of the job seekers who went into healthcare, um, maybe from a different industry and why they did it. So on this uh, slide in particular, I just wanna point out if you go to careerforcemn.com slash healthcare, you're going to find a lot of resources that are available to you, um, whether you are a job seeker or whether you are a student or educator. We've got a lot of hyperlinks for things that you can use to help make your decision about the type of work, the direction, the location, finding a job, what your resume should say. Um, also, I want to point out that I believe a, a, a information blast has been done throughout the state on free training to get a person's certified nursing assistant training. This information is being housed at the Office of Higher Education website. You go to www.ohe.state.com dot m n dot u s slash c n a training and there you'll find out so much more information about how to get uh, connected with many of the th free training programs that are offered through Minnesota State University. This is available for anyone I believe when they're eighteen and up um, and all locations of the state and also there are virtual training online training sessions as well as in person. So I encourage you to go there and I'll put the link in the chat in just a minute. But I do wanna dispel one myth. You know, sometimes they say, oh, healthcare doesn't pay enough. Um, Department of Employment and Economic Development's labor market team has tracked this information for a very, very long time. And on this page here, you'll see that some of the starting wages um, perhaps for a young person, person who's 19, oh, well, under 19, 16 and up, but then as they um, gain maturity, they gain experience, they are promoted within a position, their median wage really does grow. So, you know, when we read a job posting, it says starting wage of but please don't let that stop you um, that if you are coming with a, a range of background, you're going to be moving up the wage ladder faster. Another uh, source of this information is our labor market team local look blog. And so I'll put this um, URL in the chat too. So you can read about the conditions, the healthcare um, data, their wage, the numbers of openings in your area. They've written all of this new content for um, January. So it's all really fresh. But I'd like to 
get on to our content. I know that all of our presenters are here. First, we're going to start with a speaker from International Institute of Minnesota. She's going to tell us about their certified nursing program, their medical training programs, and how she got involved in the healthcare industry. And then we're going to hear from a team from Gillette Children's Specialty Healthcare, um, a little bit larger facility, but they're doing a lot of great work in supporting all of their employees. So, first of all, I am so happy to um, have International Institute of Minnesota here. Take it away, Fati. Right, thank you so much for the introduction, Liz. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I'm really excited to talk to all of you about the ways that our organization supports people who wanna go into the medical field. Um, and I'll be giving a little bit of a background on the programs that we have available to you. Um, and I'll talk more in depth about one of the women who participated in our program and all the success that she's had in the healthcare field. Um, thank you. Um, so first, I want to talk a little bit about the International Institute of Minnesota, which is the organization that I'm from. Um, and this organization exists to help immigrants to obtain self-sufficiency and full membership in American life. Um, and one of the main ways that we do this is through helping immigrants to obtain employment in the U.S. Um, and we have a really robust medical training program that helps immigrants to obtain um, nursing, particularly nursing. We also have um, other training programs I'll talk about in a second. Um, so our organization really helps new Americans that arrive in our community. Um, and we come with the mindset that when new Americans or immigrants come to the United States, they come with a wealth of talent potential and ambition. Um, and we work in close collaboration with employer partners. The Institute has developed training programs and career pathways that match the talent of new Americans with the needs of local employers. So um, the Institute is training the new American workforce and is a national model for success. So our goal is really to help new Americans or immigrants to gain employment in the medical field. Um, so we make partnerships with employer with employers so that we can connect immigrants with medical employers. Um, and we do this through our medical career pathway, which is um, kind of like a group of programs. Um, so one of the programs in our pathway is the nursing assistant program, which I'll talk about in a second, um, which is for people who want to become nurses. Another program we have is College Readiness Academy, which is for people who want to go into college, but may not be ready yet for college. So they may need the extra writing support, um, study skills, all those kinds of things. And then um, I'll also talk about the medical career advancement program, which is the program that I'm from. So I'm the navigator for the M medical career advancement, or sometimes I'll say MCA, so I mean the same program. Um, and I also want to mention that we have financial coaches available to all clients at the Institute. Um, so we really try to have the organization be a one stop shop that has wraparound services for any immigrant that's looking for work in the medical field. Um, and so, first, I'll talk about the nursing assistant program we have, which is a free program uh, for any immigrant that wants to become a certified nursing assistant. And we, after you go through the program, the program trains you to become a CNA. So you come, you don't pay anything. It's a free program, um, and you take classes in order to become trained as a CNA. Um, and then once you take those classes and then you graduate, we will help you to find employment with one of our partner um, employers. Um, and one really great thing about this program is we have a 97% graduation pass rate. So 97% of our clients pass the national exam for nursing assistance. 87% of our students are hired right after graduation. Um, and they usually make about 16, 25 an hour as the average wage of our nursing assistant students. Um, but a lot of times they go on for more advancement, either more training um, or more specialty where they make more than that amount. Um, and I will post links to all of our programs in the chat in a second. Um, and then the next program I wanna talk about is the Medical Career Advancement Program. And the Medical Career Advancement Program or MCA at the International Institute offers guidance and tuition assistance to foreign born individuals that want to advance their medical career. So you can kind of think about 
nursing assistant as the first step, and then medical career advancement as the second step. Um, so the medical care advancement is for people who are immigrants that are attending nursing school. So whether they want to become an LPN, licensed practical nurse, registered nurse, um, any level of nursing, or any um, anybody who's an immigrant that's going to school for nursing or going to school for any other medical training program that requires direct patient care. So sometimes we work with phlebotomists, um, medical lab techs. Um, any kind of medical field that uh, is working directly with uh, patients. And um, so the program helps immigrants in many different ways. Um, one of them is they provide our program, we provide one on one academic and career advising. Um, so you will get academic and career advising either from me or Brooke. And then you also get many management classes and financial coaching as part of your participation in the program. You'll also get partial tuition assistance for nursing classes. Um, so right now we have scholarships available to anybody who is an immigrant that's going to nursing school or, or any other medical training school. Um, and then we also have academic tutoring and NCLEX preparation. So um, we have really amazing volunteer nurse tutors that work with us that um, can kind of like tutor you through nursing school or through any medical training school that you're going through. Um, and then that can also tour you after you graduate and you're studying for the NCLEX, which is the national, um, which is the state exam for nursing. Um, and then another really good thing about this program is we also, you'll also get employment services. So um, we not only help you while you're in nursing school, but we also provide employment services after you graduate. So um, after you're done, you graduate, we can work one-on-one -on -one with you to, with your resume, your cover letter, um, interview prep, um, anything kind of anything employment related, we provide recommendation. We also like connect our clients with um, places of employment. So we have like connections with a lot of long term care facilities, hospitals and clinics in the area. Um, and we can kind of help advocate for you and um, help you through that employment process. Um, so wherever you find yourself on the medical career pathway, the medical career advancement program is here to support you and advocate for you. Um, and our agency also offers integrated services for ESL, job placement, uh, workforce skills, and cultural training. Um, so I don't have time to talk about all of our programs in depth today, um, but we do have programs for pretty much any immigrant that wants to go into medical training program. We have um, everything from English classes to our the program talk about today, which is the medical career advancement program. So we you can kind of get help anywhere along the road wherever you are. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about the eligibility requirements for this program. Um, so first, you have to have you have to be born outside the United States. You also have to be attending a public college or nonprofit college, and you also would need to be in a nursing program or other medical training program. Um, you also have to be eligible to work in the United States. Um, and yeah, th so those are pretty much all the requirements for the program. And of course, this program is also free. Um, and if you wanna learn more about the program, both my name and the program manager Brooke's name is on the screen. Um, and I can also share that in the chat at the end as well. Um, so feel free to contact us if you're interested in being in the program, you have questions about it. Um, anything like that. Um, yeah, okay, so now I want to talk about a really amazing superhero story, which is uh, one of my clients, Aisha, who um, is a really great example and motivation for anybody who wants to work in the medical field, who wants to become a nurse. Um, because Aisha really shows that you can start from anywhere. You could literally start from ESL and you can still become a nurse. Um, Aisha really went step by step in the medical career ladder. She started all the way from ESL. So when she first came to the country, she was taking ESL classes. She was literally learning English. Um, she went from there. She worked really, really hard. And um, then she went on and went to college. So she passed all her ESL classes. She learned enough English to attend college. She went to college. Um, when she went to college, she realized that she's really interested in becoming a nurse. And she took pre-nursing classes. Um, from there, she did step one of nursing. 
uh, which is LPN. So she got trained as a licensed practical nurse. Um, and then she decided she wants to advance her career, her nursing career even more. And she got her registered nursing degree very recently, her associate degree. Um, and then she decided she, want, she would like to advance even more in the nursing career, in her nursing career. And then she got her BSN or bachelor's degree in nursing like about a year ago now. Um, and we've been with Aisha, you know, every step of the way in her nursing. We've been with her since she did her LPN, through her RN, through her BSN. Um, and one thing that I think really helped Aisha to reach her goal of becoming a bachelor's BSN nurse is she was very resourceful. She took advantage of every opportunity for help uh, that she could get. And uh, one of the programs that I uh, that she's even told me that really helped her is the MCA program, which is the medical career advancement program I was just talking about earlier. Um, so she has been in our program throughout her whole nursing career. Um, she received one-on-one -on -one academic advising. So we advised her on which college to attend. We advised her on everything relating to college and nursing. Um, she received scholarships from our program through her LPN, through her RN, and then through her BSN. Um, she also got tutoring. Um, so my coworker Brooke worked with her through her LPN and RN, and then I worked with her through her BSN. Um, and we provided her writing tutoring. Um, so we kind of helped tutor her through her writing assignments. Uh, we also helped her um, connect her with the nurse tutor that helped her with the nursing content that she was learning in the classroom. So she got the writing tutoring, the nursing tutoring, scholarships, um, employment support. So more recently, she actually got her dream job as a BSN level nurse at Hennepin County Medical Center um, in the psych unit, which was really her goal throughout this whole thing. Um, and I helped her through um, updating her resume, um, writing her cover letter, um, writing recommendations for her to the hospital, um, doing interview prep with her to really help her um be more likely to get that position that she really wanted in the hospital which she eventually did recently get um so i think being resourceful and using the mca program using any other program that you find in the community that you're eligible for um would be very helpful for you um Fadma worked or aisha sorry worked in long-term care um and then she also worked in the hospital um and i think another thing that's really amazing about aisha's story is that she pays it forward she's been paying it forward since she started her nursing career. She still does. Um, she helps a lot of other um, people in the community that want to become nurses uh, by connecting them to our program, um, by personally helping them to um, helping them through nursing school, helping them to get connected to the help that she got. And um, I think that's a really amazing part of her story as well. And I think her story is super motivational and. I, I hope motivates all of you wherever you are, whether you're at the start and you're just starting college um, or whether you're almost done, you know, to keep pushing forward and that you could do it too. Um, and then lastly, I just want to share our contact. In, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Nope, it's all yours. Keep going. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, um, so I just want to share our contact information. Um, so this is contact information for the whole organization. Um, so you can call this number and ask specifically about any of the programs that I talked about, whether it's the medical career advancement program, the nursing assistant program. Um, we also have other, so you can ask them when you talk to them about other programs as well that you might be eligible for. Um, another place to look is our website. Our website is very easy to navigate. Uh, you can look through the programs and then see um, all the programs that we have to offer. And um, yeah, so here is our contact information. Feel free to contact us. We love connecting with anybody in the community that is interested in going into nursing or interested in the medical field um, or interested in, in um, employment in general who is an immigrant. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much everything. If you have any questions for me, please put it in the chat. I will be answering questions there. Thank you so much for telling Aisha's story and giving us all this information. I really appreciate all of this stuff. And yeah, we're highlighting superheroes this month with the healthcare initiative. So I really appreciate that superhero story. Um, 
Thank you. Let's go on. Um, now I would like to introduce the team from Gillette Children's Specialty Healthcare. Um, Gillette Children's is a large system within Minnesota, and uh, they've brought a team of three people to tell individual stories. So we're going to start with Michelle Claussen, and then she'll introduce the rest of her coworkers. Yes. Hi, Michelle Claussen. I am a talent acquisition specialist, also known as a recruiter. Um, for Gillette Children's. Um, just to start off with the slide, I just want to emphasize the amount of impact you make as a nurse. Um, not just nurse, basically anyone in the healthcare field. Um, it is some, I constantly have phone screens with nurses, um, LPNs, CNAs, and I am just, can't tell you um, the stories that I hear that are just um, tells me about how empathetic um, and caring these individuals are that decide to do this um, profession. Um, healthcare is a pillar of economic stability. Um, you know, so healthcare affects everyone in this country. Um, so there are plenty of job opportunities in this field. Um, healthcare institutions, um, we're looking for diverse candidates to care and connect with our growing diverse patient populations. That's very important to Gillette Children's. Um, you know, if you like working with your hands and you don't wanna work bedside with a patient, become a surgical technologist um, that's certified. Um, that is a growing career. Um, I definitely recommend doing that. I just had a person who was a biology teacher who, um, became a principal later on and then decided, um, I still want to help children, but I want to do something different. And so now he is working as a surgical technologist certified. So um, there are so many different avenues in healthcare that I like to talk to people about when I do um, screen candidates. Um, and, you know, there are so many positions that people don't consider. Um, finance, research is a big one, um, grants administration, supply chain, um, lots of customer service and patient care, um, communications, IT, human resources. Um, I came from local government, so there's definitely opportunities to move into healthcare. Um, and Gillette is also known as a top workplace um, by Forbes and Star Tribune um, in 2021. And so we have that um, honor and award that we take very seriously. Uh, we offer very um, competitive pay. Um, flexible schedules, great benefits. Um, and we are working really hard to hire diverse employees. Um, in January of last year, we were at 16%, 16.52%. Um, and we've moved since then to 17.76% um, that we are hiring diverse candidates. We have made a goal that we're gonna hit 20% and 2022. That's why um, we have such great um, team members here with me. Uh, we have two registered nurses, Hakeem Abdul Wahab, and then we have another team member, um, Latasia um, is her first name and her last name is Erickson. And they are long-term, um, long-standing employees of Gillette Children's and I'm so excited to introduce them. And Hakeem is going to go first and talk about his story and his journey as an RN. Hakeem was having a little bit of bandwidth issues. Oh, I'm wondering if we could start with Latosia. Sure. Is she... Are you on mute? Okay, I think I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, okay, yeah. So I'm Latasia Erickson and I'm a registered nurse in the outpatient clinic. Um, so let's see, how I got started is, um, when I was young, um, I always wanted to be a pediatrician. Like I was like kids, and so um, I um, I wanted to be a pediatrician. But when I was ten, I was diagnosed with scoliosis, and um, I eventually had to have surgery on my back. And when I was in um, the hospital, I noticed that the nurses were the ones who got to uh, spend all the time with the the patients. Um, so after then, I wanted to become a nurse. So um, that was when I was 12. And then I, when I 
graduated high school, um, I did kind of mess around for the first year of my um, college education. And then I actually, I'm from Ohio. I moved here to Minnesota and I went to um, St. Kate's and um, I became a registered nurse. I took their two-year program and sat for my boards and became a registered nurse. Um, and the the thing that stood out to me was, I mean, like, of course, the doctors make a lot more money than nurses do, but I really wanted to spend time with the families um, as a nurse and um, really get to know the patients and have a rapport with the patients and then um, be able to follow up and see how things are going with the patients. And so that is really the reason why I um, became a nurse. Um, in the outpatient clinic, I get to work with a lot of other people, um, nursing assistants, um, providers, um, doctors, all kind of doctors, uh, orthopedic doctors, physical medicine doctors, um, rheumatology doctors, doctors that I didn't even know existed. So, I mean, it's a great place to work. Um, when I first started, um, in the outpatient clinic, I was one of one of um, the only black nurses. Um, I'm African American, um, but since then we have um, gotten more African American nurses, and more African nurses, more people, um, brown and black people. Um, the diversity has definitely increased. Um, let's see, what else do I want to say? Um, and no, I guess, oh, go ahead. Well, the question I was going to ask with all the challenges with COVID uh, over the past 2 years, why have you stayed? Oh, for the families, of course, mm -hmm. for the families, I've been at Gillette for 15, going on 16 years now, and I have worked most of that time with um, Dr. Gormley, who's a physical medicine rehab doctor and the families know me like the families that come here. Um, in the outpatient clinic specifically, they come and see Dr. Gormley or any physical medicine rehab doctors because now we have teams. Um, instead of just working with one doctor, you work with all of the physical medicine rehab doctors um, to see the patients. And they see the patients like uh, every three months, every six months, uh, once a year. And you really get to know the families. The families really get to know you. Like they know that if they need something, um, I am the nurse that works primarily with Dr. Gormley and they will um, sit, call me or they will send me an email and say, hey, I need this order or hey, I need this medication or I'm having this trouble with getting this type of um, equipment. You know, how, what do I need to do in order to get this equipment for my disabled child? Um, I mean, definitely it's the families and, you know, with COVID you, I mean, it's, it's bad enough that you, you're scared to go out of the house. You have to wear a mask. Um, but it's good to see people that, you know, you know, you just, you feel like, well, I feel like personally, I don't want to live, leave the families hanging, um, without knowing other people. And, and I feel like at Gillette, um, the people who work at Gillette really want to be here. They want to see that the best is done for each family that is here, you know, because the families are really kind of at a disadvantage from the beginning because they do have special needs kids and there there are things that go with having a special needs child, tube feedings, um, physical therapy, occupational therapy, equipment needs. I mean, there's just so many other things and I really just want to be here to help them to to be the best people that they can be and to help the families in any way that I can. Good, thank you. Um, yeah, and then I was just gonna bring up too, just recently we um, have the Gillette Black and Brown Employee Resource Group um, where the um, Black and Brown employees, we meet like once a month and we talk about different things that are going on and try to, try to have a, a bigger sense of community um so that we can support one another because i know there have definitely been some incidences where people of color have not felt as welcomed or um, they have had they've run into difficulties and we just really want to make sure that we are uh, being inclusive of everybody um and then just to finish things off um I have to share uh, that there is a nurse named Tammy that is um, a doctor prepared nurse and I myself am back in school now to become a nurse practitioner. And she has been very, very instrumental in helping me move forward. And I just wanna say that um, the nurses that work here, especially um, 
people who are more, more diverse, Tammy is African American also, she has definitely been instrumental in helping me to move forward. Um, I was March of Dimes Nurse of the Year in 2019, and she helped me. She encouraged me to apply for that, and you really have to tell like your whole nursing story from when I became a nurse in 2001 to me being a nurse here at Gillette for 15 years. And she was very instrumental in that. And I, I was March of Dime Pediatric Nurse of the Year in 2019. Um, and now, now that I'm back in school, she has been helping me with papers and things of that nature. And so it's really a, a community here um, of people who really wanna be here and people who want to see you succeed in whatever capacity that you're in um, at Gillette in the healthcare industry so that's great to hear congratulations on your yeah. awards too <laughs> yeah. thank you um but it's yeah it's such it's so important that everyone in the industry keep on paying it forward yeah. to new people coming in so that's fantastic yep thank you you're welcome ha hakeem is uh back online yeah sorry um, yeah, sorry, there, uh, there is a network issue here. I'm very sorry about that. Fine. Oh, okay, can I start now? Go ahead, okay. thank you. Okay, my name is Hakeem, uh, Hakeem Abdul Wahab. Um, I am a registered uh, nurse at Joel Children Hospital. And um, I've been a nurse since uh, 2000, uh, February 2018. Um, I work at uh, adult unit um, uh, as a registered, a registered nurse now, I work as a resource nurse, just a float nurse. Um, uh, we have uh, different kinds of uh, 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 units around neuroscience, uh, ortho, rehab, and uh, PQ. Um, so I just cross train and work um, uh, 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 every unit I can. Um, uh, before that, I was... Uh, uh, to tell you the story, how my journey at Gillette and uh, 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 and how uh, I came from Ethiopia, then I moved here, then got a job as housekeeping, and um, that my housekeeping uh, uh, job at Gillette um, it was uh, uh, helped me uh, to go for nursing assistance because I see. Uh, uh, children with special needs, and uh, I have uh, uh, come from uh, a big uh, family uh, sibling background. I have eight siblings. Uh, I have uh, my youngest sister who has a Down syndrome. Uh, I used to care for her uh, back home when I was in Ethiopia. That inspired me a lot to pursue and to be more compassionate and to become a nurse. So when I see all this uh, kiddo with a special need, at Gillette that uh, prompt me uh, to pursue a uh, nursing uh, profession. So, but there are so many people that help me uh, uh, to uh, get where I am right now. Um, uh, it was uh, very uh, challenging, especially as uh, English is a second language and um, I have to navigate and find a way uh, to help me pursue or to overcome my challenges. So uh, the first things I would like to thank is Tammy Sinkfield. Uh, she's a, 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 a nursing supervisor at Gillette Children's Hospital. She helped me a lot in pursuing this uh, dream, uh, my dream come true. Um, uh, so far, so good. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, 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 one thing I really like about uh, <clears throat> working at Gillette Children's Hospital is and uh, is you know uh, we see this special uh, surgeries you don't see anywhere else so we it's only found in Midwest uh, so some of the surgeons uh, it's uh, uh, they work for Jewish children hospitals uh, the, the orthopedic surgeon or neurosurge uh, we do like a backlift and pump implantations um, uh, uh, deep brain stimulations, uh, vagus nerve stimulation, all those surgeries, I, I, have, I haven't even uh, heard of it or I haven't even uh, learned it at um, nursing program because when we went to nursing schools, that we only, uh, most of the time we learn the, the majority of populations of uh, people like, you know, diabetes or hypertension, stuff like that. This is one population's uh, 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 
uh, a, per, uh, a, per, uh, a patient who has a disorder with that in it. Uh, uh, working as Gillette helped me a lot to um, uh, 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 develop more education, to develop more experience and confidence, you know, how to take care of, like, you know, uh, children with, uh, with a very, uh, total cares, you know, um, uh, and we, ha we have to rely on so many resources from so many departments, you know, child life, it could be uh, a social worker, it could be like, you know, we have uh, orthotics, prosthetics uh, department who does like wheelchairs, um, 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 casting, stuff like that for, for our patient. So um, Gillette is like uh, my home. Every time I go to the, uh, uh, the the hospitals, I feel like I, I'm, I'm, I'm at home because I know the surgeons, I used to clean their offices when they see me. Um, uh, by the way, I got my Bachelor of Science in Nursing in 20, uh, end of 2020, and the, the COVID came in. And uh, so after that, I still work at Gillette. And when they see me, they, they're really, really happy and humbled and, you know, and as a people of colors, uh, I'm very, 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 very fortunate and very, very lucky to get there. And I would like to pursue and I would like to inspire people, so, you know, hey, this is doable. I, I did this, you know. Uh, uh, you just need to find a support system. You just need to find, navigate through. Uh, 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 if you have a challenges, uh, if you need, like, you know, a study guide, if you need, if you need, if you don't know how to get from, one point A to one, uh, point A to point B, and there's so many resources, and we have uh, we need to just um, uh, get together and you know um, every time I see people, so students, I try to share my information at Gillette or somewhere else, especially my communities. You know, I just say this is doable, and I just wanna. Uh, uh, have more nurses uh, from Ethiopia or from Somalia or from Africa, you know, because every time I go to a patient room, they see me, they're so happy. And the trust, the trust is very, very, very fantastic. And they just share the information, everything they need to do uh, 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 with me. And, you know, I try, I'm kind of like a, a bridge to them so I can navigate for them. I can advocate for the family and for for the patient. They need this, they need that. And uh, we need a more uh, 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 color, uh, people of color like me, uh, especially at Gillette, who can, you know, um, advocate for the patients and for the family as well. Thank you, Hakeem. Um, yeah, you're right. Relationships are so critical, both, you know, internally for, you know, all, both you and Latosha, as, you know, you've grown in your uh, careers, but then also with the work itself, it's all relationships based. So I appreciate you being here today. To yeah, I appreciated that uh, he brought up Tammy Singfeld also because she's very instrumental to me also. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, so she sounds like a superpower within yeah. the Gillette system. Yes, she is. Well, yes. Michelle, do you want to just uh, wrap up? Yeah. Um, what do people do if they're interested in um, getting started at Gillette? Well, um, just go to our website. We have a careers page that has all of the opportunities that we have available right now. Um, you can also sign up for the 14 day healthcare virtual career fair that's being put on um, right now by Career Force. Um, we're looking at resumes that are coming in through that way. You can reach people actually right now. Um, we're open. Um, to take um, applications and chat with people who are interested. Um, this career fair goes until uh, the 25th um, will be another time that we do it again, where we're 2 to 4 p.m. We're there, but you can drop off your resume if you're interested. Um, I know I had some people who were interested in volunteering. I just shared in the chat um, the link for opportunities to volunteer. Um, we have we are looking for diverse candidates. So please, please um, consider Gillette Children's when you're considering um, a career in healthcare. Thank you to all of you for being here today. I, I do appreciate it.
You're welcome. Um, Thank I, you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. I want to point out that International Institute does have a guide to colleges and careers in healthcare. Fachi, do you want to say anything about this? Do you have any more information? Yes. Yeah, so um, we have this guide to healthcare that basically has like a lot of different jobs that you can have in healthcare, including the ones that I just talked about, like CNA, RN, LPN. Um, but it also has, <coughs> excuse me, it also has other jobs um, that some people might not know. But I know um, we talked earlier um, about there are jobs that people don't know even exist in healthcare. Um, so this guide is supposed to help you to kind of like see and know what kind of positions can you even have in healthcare. Um, and then it'll also tell you what education you need in order to get to that position. Um, and it kind of like has information about that that I think could be helpful for people who are considering, maybe you're at a place right now where you think I wouldn't go into healthcare, but I don't know what kind of job I wanna have. So if you're at that place right now, this kind of guide would help you to, if you go through it, it'll help you to see like, oh, I could become a nurse, I could become a rad tech, I could become an MLT, I could become a surge tech, I could, you know, like you'll see like all the different kinds of careers that you could have in healthcare. And it'll have like just a little bit more information about all the different kinds of careers, like the education that you might need, uh, places that you might work, and then some of the wages that you might have. Yeah, it's 30 pages long, and I was really impressed with it when I was reading it today. So, yeah, I, uh, we put the link in the chat, and it was put in earlier, too. I encourage everyone to look at it. It gives a lot of information about Minnesota State University system, as well as all of those career pathway um, issues. And, you know, I really encourage everyone on this call to join us again next week for Explore Careers in Healthcare when we do talk more about growing within the industry. Even as Hakeem said, you know, some of the other positions that he started in and grew up. Um, I have heard this from time and time again from everyone that I've talked to. They started in one role and they kept on going, and they've been in healthcare for 20, 25, 30 years now. Um, on this slide, I have a couple of the other events that are taking place in healthcare this week. Um, there are events going on all over the place, one for Hennepin County tomorrow on the 19th. That's a virtual fair. Bemidji has an in-person fair on the 20th. On the 20th, there is a Dakota Scott County online job fair. It has all industries in it, but it will have at least five or six different healthcare as well as um, non-healthcare companies. Um, again, my Explore Careers in, health, in Healthcare Career Pathways next Monday at 3 p.m. Please come on back. We're gonna have two or three or four more great speakers um, and then four, uh, Blaine, Montevideo, uh, so many more events. So please check out the website. And we have that has hiring events. So these aren't career for sponsored, but if a, a facility, a healthcare facility, long-term care facility is holding a hiring event, they post it on this calendar and then um, you can go directly to, you know, following their instructions, whether it's virtual or an in-person uh, drop-in interview for paper interview, paper applications or whatever the case may be. So I encourage you to bookmark that page. So thank you very much to all of our speakers and to all of our listeners for being on this call today. Please reach out to careerforcemn.com slash locations for help with your resume, for help with a cover letter, for figuring out how to get started on your job search. Um, I look forward to seeing you again and uh, talk to you next week. Thank you.